Okay, question one, uh, which I haven't done. Um, so it asks, um, at what angle is the first order maximum for four fifth? Uh, yeah, so we are being given the wavelength, um, blue light falling on double slit, separated by some distance d. And um, these kind of questions, it's uh, easy in the sense that um, if you have the right formula, you can plug in the numbers. So let me just write down the right formula, but refer you to the textbook section so that you don't just get stuck at that right formula. I you know, really want to uh, encourage a problem solving approach. That's not just looking for the formulas to plug in numbers, too, but developing a conceptual understanding and uh, making sure that you know how to drive it from scratch if you need it. Now, the, having said all that, the right formula for the interference uh, maxima is this. This is the constructive interference for double slit. Um, so it relates the path length difference, which is given by the slit separation times the sine of the angle. It relates that path length difference with the the um, with the 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 in, integer multiple of a wavelength. So integer multiple, m here is integer, times the wavelength lambda. This is the condition that will give you constructive interference uh, for double slit. And actually, um, n slit interference, as you will see um, this week. So, so that's the formula I'll be using. But just so that... Um, we have the correct pictures. Uh, these are the sections that you should uh, look at um, for the correct um, understanding of the setup. What the um, what uh, Young's double solid interference involves this kind of setup, and I think in the next this is the interference condition and. You can see that the right hand side is this for constructive interference. And for the left hand side, that is covered in the next section where they work out the geometry for this delta L. Um, oh, wait, I guess they don't. It's a simple trigonometry. Oh, wait, wait, there, yeah. So that's the geometry. Yeah. So uh, make sure you understand that argument because uh, here's the one of the pitfalls that will fall upon or people will fall into if you are simply memorizing this formula. Because uh, as you do single slit diffraction uh, this week, <laughs> um, the formulas you see for single slit diffraction minimum, meaning destructive interference, it's going to look very familiar to this. And if you are just uh, memorizing formulas or looking them up, it becomes very easy to confuse the two. Uh, it's not as easy to get confused if uh, um, you have a more solid ground to stand on. So, so with that, um, really all I have to do is plug in the numbers to get the answer. <laughs> so <laughs> let me do that. Uh, I'm just going to do the algebra in my head. So I'm looking for the angle. So I want to divide up by D and I want to take arc sign. So uh, first order, so that means M is 1. So all I need is arc sign of the wavelength, uh, 455 nanometers. I'm going to keep nanometer as my unit divided by um, the distance d. And it's uh, 0 0.065. Now it's in millimeters. So I can't just uh, divide the nanometers to by millimeter and get a unitless quantity. Um, I happen to have uh, the, the SI prefixes memorized. Uh, milli is 10 to the minus 3, nano is 10 to the minus 9, so to convert between them, 1 millimeter is a million nanometers, so I'm going to times 1 times 10 to the power of 6. So um, Now this uh, Sage method will give me the answer in radians, I want the answer in degrees, so I'm going to convert the radian answer to degrees, times 180 divided by pi. And uh, it'll give me an answer that's kind of an exacted thing that I can plug in. So this is for converting that into decimal approximation. So all of that and 
when it, it, it has to initialize some stuff when I'm first running this. So it'll take a few seconds when it's done. I'll put like in here 0 0.401 degrees. Degrees? No, that's, I guess, a typo. Or a mislead. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. So question two, yeah, this is one of the reasons I haven't done it because <laughs> this is just involved looking up the right formula. So actually this is the right formula still. So let me use that. I think a hint is actually identical for that reason. The only thing that's changed are the wavelengths and, um, and the you know, slit separation and the number of order. So actually, let me do it this way. I think I can show uh, this uh, syntax. So I'm going to define some variables for sage math, uh, lambda or, or lam. Uh, lambda is a special, lambda is a special keyword for Python and it doesn't like it when I overwrite it. So lam, uh, I think I want D and I want M. Um, yeah, so those will be the parameters I need. I just still need to declare them so that I can use them in my expressions. So arc sine of, um, so just rewriting what I had before, the wavelength divided by the um, slit separation and, uh, oh, I need the M multiplied in front. Before I didn't have that because it was one. Um, and I guess I want this uh, generally converted. So, so this is the kind of expression that sage math does understand. As you can see here, this is what it understands it to be. Let me put this into theta. So this is my answer for theta. This is kind of what I would write on a piece of paper if I'm working this out by hand. And you know, theta is this. Now, sage math has a substitution syntax that makes it really easy to recycle algebraic expressions like this and plug in numbers. It's uh, uh, this is syntax here, uh, substitute a function. Uh, let me just show you the documentation within SageMath for that. Um, it's a substitute function, or it's a, something that they call bound method. Um, and it, it takes in a different kind of forms. I guess this is the most intuitive to you, so let me use it that way. So theta, I'm going to substitute in values and let me specify them one at a time. Uh, my order is going to be three, third order. My wavelength will be uh, 575 nanometers. And I'll keep everything in nanometers, uh, seeing that um, if I uh, keep everything in one unit uh, of length, then they'll cancel out. So. Uh, the wavelength is 575 nanometers. The slit separation is, the question gives it to me in millimeters. And as before, I need to convert it to nanometer by multiplying by 10 to the power of six. I think that's it. Um, now, if I just press enter, it'll probably still have the pi thing. So, oh, I can do this, I can chain it. So uh, this returns to this expression. That expression has other bound methods one of which are this n function that I was using before. Um, it, this is one of the things that uh, makes people like object-oriented programming. <laughs> Anyways, so that's the answer, 0 0.824 degrees. It'll have accepted three as correct, but might as well round correctly. Um, okay, let's keep going. Question three. Um, uh, I just did this and I can't reuse any of this because <laughs> it's a different question. Now it is still using the same formula because it's asking for the separation between two slits. That would be this D for which, okay, orange light uh, of some wavelength has its first maximum M equals to one at an angle of 38 degrees. Okay, so I'm looking at this equation here. We are still looking at maximum. This is still applicable. And all I really need to do is um, um, just solve this for D. And um, yeah, so let me just do that. So I guess uh, let me declare theta as a variable. Can I do that? Oops. Uh, okay, I can do that. Oh, good. Um, and um, so, yeah, I mean, I know how to, so, you know, D there is equal to M times lambda divided by sine of theta. 
Uh, I can do that algebra in my head. I just did that there. <laughs> and uh, let me plug in all the numbers. So the distance is um, substituting in m is equal to 1, first uh, maximum. And um, wavelength is equal to 605 nanometers. Uh, now, I can see that I'm going to want my d in... Um, in, in the unit of microns. So let me convert this nanometer thing into micron. A micron is 10 to the minus six meters. So to convert from nanometer to micron, I need to multiply by 10 to the power of minus three. Okay, that's the wavelength in microns. Um, and I need the theta. And I have to be careful here. I think Sage Math expects angular quantities to be in radians. So where it tells me the angle in degrees, I need to convert it to radians by multiplying by pi, dividing by one. Okay, so that'll give me something. I think that'll already give me the decimal. All right, it's not. So let me pass it through the decimal approximation. Okay, 0 0.983 micro. I think that makes sense. This is really close to the wavelength. And this is a really large angle, and I think that's right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, again, easy questions <laughs> once you have the right formula. And I think I see the um, kind of how people fall into that bad habit. But, okay, it is a bad habit. Uh, it, uh, um, <laughs> I do want to spend the additional time and try to develop conceptual understanding and try to see if you can drive this formula from scratch. All right, uh, find the distance between. Okay. Um, oh, I think that's the exact same question as before. Oh, uh, no. First uh, minimum. So this is where you have to be careful. Um, so the right formula for the minimum would be this and uh, actually when we were flipping through the textbook you kind of saw that in within the section um section 3.1 you saw the the destructive interference condition that would have been the half integer values so the way we usually write it is m plus one half or m i guess m minus one half is more consistent with the values of m use starting with a one, uh, m minus one half times lambda. These half integer multiples of wavelength will give you a condition that leads to uh, destructive interference and the half length difference that leads to the phase difference which will lead to the destructive interference. That's a still design theta. So using this, which will give destructive interference for double solid, um, we need to find the t. Okay, so I guess I have to redo the expression for t. So I'm using a, a upward arrow to bring up the past expression that starts with d equals. That's what I've done. So instead of m, it should be m minus one half. And I'll plug in the correct value of one, m. Um, I think the rest are the same. All right. Good. And let me just uh, reuse what I have done here. So m equals 1 will give you 1 half here, which is the first uh, smallest half integer. That's what I want for the first minimum. And for the wavelength, I'll need to use for 30 nanometer. No violet. Is that violet? I guess it might be um, at an angle of uh, 17 degrees. OK. That gives me this, 0 0.735 micron. That was already the use that we are using. I think that's all good. Yeah. Again, easy questions. Well, relatively. Um, so I guess there's a reason I'm calling these easy. Um, usually the easiest questions in physics are the questions where you find the right formula and plug in the numbers to. And um, I guess the reason I keep uh, asking you to not kind of uh, stuck in that rut of approaching all problems that way is because um, that approach will limit you to basically being able to do the easiest questions and just the easiest questions. 
I, I want you to be able to do harder questions. That's why I don't want you stuck there. 